going into this map of Ancient, they were on a seven map winning streak. They just took a loss of 14-16 to Gamer Legion a little bit earlier on today. Outside of this though, this has been a very good map for the Czechs. It really has been. They have been fantastic on it. Like, there's one of the things I think you mentioned uh, yesterday. You don't beat Sinners on Ancient. You just don't do it. And for good reason, they are a stellar team on this one. And I have my fears as to whether Vista will be able to turn it around. I had hope that maybe they'd take the results from the previous couple of days in the upper bracket finals. They'd take those and do some research and really... Cl clamp down on the maps themselves. Looks like Vincent has been doing the exact same thing. And they'll start things off with the T side debating the CT forces. They're once again playing this pistol to perfection. They spotted Jedker and Goofy. They get away with the opening kill on the CT side. Jedker at one point of health. Goofy to fall back to a four on four. A yeah, great follow up. Near Frag even turns it into a couple of kills. Great capitalization after they lose that first. They've got a candle smoke, so they can start working some mid control. You're going to have that first point of call of PHR playing in Donut and Vizsla just playing two players out to that B side. PHR just sitting back on the counteractive rotations. CTs are thinking about rotating the second man of Sparrow over towards the A site. He's thinking about what he wants to do here. The Julies will take fight and lose out his life. Marcos down and out. Two man advantage for Sinners. The back side will start to get closed in here by PHR as the bomb should commit towards the bomb site here. P250s just tapping their way with the raid. Bosch Sparrow caught with no Kevlar and no chance of defending the site. PHR does get one frag in the back lines at least, but as his teammate falls, it's all on him. Uh, Pechard's got to try and see if he can get something out of nothing and realizes his chances. What am I realistically going to find? Bait in a mistake, get some over-aggression, and the T's, they're just not peeking him at all. USP just jump facing. I set walking away to save onto the Kev Kev Kevlar here because, as you mentioned before, not really a lot, of, a lot of chance for him to go for the retake and get anything out of this. Pistol game for Sinners, and we start things off the way we ended it over on this second map. One round to start off. Sinners even going to go for the hunt here. They know that he's escaped. They're going to try to track him down. Get that little bit of Kevlar out of the way. Not like it will matter too much in the grand scale of things. It would be nice to pad the stats and, of course, remove a little bit of extra equipment from the Vista camp. And either way, it's a starting round for the Sinners, and that they can be happy with. I like the way that they combined into that ramp tag because you could see how that first kill comes in from Goofy and you can play it sort of two ways. Just allow them to have the man advantage and play it passive or actually fight back and, and try and see if you can catch them sleeping and just falling back. They get caught completely off guard. Neofrag being able to find some immediate impact. And for Vizsla, they've got a decent read on this. They're playing three on eight on the force by. SMG and Deagle crossfire, utility going over, Marcos detected by Beastie, gets his kill, AK tapping forward with a headshot of Entry Jedka, gives up the angle, PHR will catch the low HP stick to a trade for the CT side, but it's a 4v3 that still favours Sinners, smokes down at the entries, will suppress vision, and they can get the bomb down safely. Man, Vizsla, is it worth going for it? I mean, they're so out of position, they're getting pushed in, and now they lose PHR, that's it, you got to save, back off. The Deagle still try to fight here for Goofy. A backstab from Neofrag is starting to close in as well. Out to Candles, he sees one, leans in towards that done up position and barely keeps his life with that kill. The Deagle back in for Sparrow with CT. Spotted out by Oscar. Mac 10 getting it two frags in that round. Plenty of money gained. And four players alive overall means Sinners. Two thumbs up, two rounds in. And in an odd way, it probably worked out better for Sinners in this grand final that they lost to Gamer Legion in the close qual earlier on today. Because if they would have won that game, they would have had to have played another best of three against Forza and then this best of three. And that's why they decided to change it from the best of five to the best of three format to sort of help their day out. So it, it actually allowed them to have some rest time in between those officials and come in prepared because, my goodness, they've done their homework coming into this series. Yeah, looking fantastic for it. Up against Pistols in our third round. Mac 10 of Oscar in particular is leaning in. A lot of beast that's gone Julius in this round because he knows he doesn't have to fully invest. Still be in a pretty decent spot. About towards the B site is where that Mac 10 is going to go. A bit of a stack in towards the A play. So if Oscar gets this kill and they'll force the rotation in, then that's going to be an easy bomb plant. If he waits too, they can actually get that bomb over quickly. Uh, you've, you've got to imagine that bomb's going to be leaving A. Easy killing for Oscar. Work with the advantage. You know the B's open. Don't be running into the stack. They can even leave Oscar just to play around the city spawn area to see if he can farm even more. Be the main objective of the MAC-10 here. Money to be gained. Economy to be established. They'll be a little bit careful about this. Mid control should be cleared up, however. Now we'll fall back in towards CT as Vista wonder where do we go with this? We know that a Mac 10 is what killed off Sparrow. How do we avoid giving him more money? Will we bait him in towards the A site, it seems like? 
This round is already over. Let's see what Sinners can find or what Vista could take away. The hunt is on for the T-side line. They want to get that Mac 10 bolstered in particular. They lose to the CTs. They won't be too fast as Oscar will get his second kill. Looking for PHR. Spot him knocking for the triple. No need to peek. The Julies can come in instead. And they can look for Marcos as well. Wonderfully played there. They will lose the Julie player with four kills to the favor of Oscar, AK in for Neo Frag. Also getting one involved at that one. 3 0 start. And again, lots of money for Sinners. Yeah, not 1100 $11,000 in for Oscar going into the fourth round. It's kind of ridiculous just how much he's been able to farm. And yeah, give himself an AWP. Now, he didn't do that out on the first map of Overpass. It was a, a way where they kept the bonus rounds going for a while. They think to themselves, well, Oscar's been so impactful with the AWP. We might as well give it to him early. Big green in his hands. Molotov's out. Flashes forward as Goofy. His eyes set initially. The Sinner's side will walk out towards the cave entrance. Oscar's AWP set up, shut down, Goofy set to fall. He's just so on point today. And this is exactly yeah. what Sinners needed going into the grand finals is one of their two star players of Oscar and Neofrag to just pop off and just be all over them. And that's exactly what Oscar's been. Neofrag hasn't even really been required. Another opening man advantage going their way. And even for Vizsla, they're not seeing much. Marcos isn't seeing anything in mid. The Candles player, Jedka's seeing nothing. And Sinners, they're retaking the control. He's watching out to that uh, boost platform. Expecting someone to pop their head above water here for the C side. The smokes will leave gaps in the uh, lines for the T's overall to try and look for angles in the CT forces. BC just going to take a direct engagement against Sparrow. Force one CT to rotate, leaving Marcos alone here in the donut position. Mains completely uncovered, unsupported. Shot will take his walk out. Zedko there alongside him. M4's in. AWP. Shot miss from Marcos. PHR can catch Shock at least. And Marcos does not know where to aim. When does he have to peek in? Not at the right moment. B-Stick. Matt 10 pick up on Jedko. Khalil chimes in. And PHR. Well, no chance in this one. A similarly strong start for Sinners in this map. I'm not going to rip into Marcos too hard because it's not just him. But it is showing that there are so many mistakes being made from Vizsla across the board with the crossfires, the information gathering. And if you're allowing those mistakes to come in, a team of the caliber of Sinners are going to capitalize. And we have seen it with so many of these duels where Vizsla are just looking the wrong way. They don't have the crossfire they thought that they did. And they're just getting completely overwhelmed. It's been a very similar story throughout the course of map one and two. Yeah, Frag taking no damage to the nades. There's a slight advantage. CT side in the HP numbers, but the weapon advantage still sits in the favor of Sinners, and now the man advantage does too. Marcos first to fall. Goofy will try to force around the corner, and the Frag has him marked. You know what, Jay? I actually don't mind that. It, you, you've got intent of actually looking to do damage. You know there's just an eco. You're down by one. Okay, let's have a playmaker. Let's do Goofy. Fly through. Try and see if we can catch them off guard. Even though it doesn't work, it shows that Vizsla don't mind playing that risk. Flashes in. Deagle out. PHR does catch one frag. Up in his hands as well. And back in with the second player. Giving up the 1v1s for the T's, but ultimately... They still find their trades and remove that warp from play as quickly as it dropped for the Sinner's side. Bomb site open for business. Bomb plant will be secured. Jedka is being wrapped in upon by B-Stick as well. So all their bases being covered. The Deagle might bait in the M4. Or he might fall back towards Candles at the wrong timing. Leaving Sparrow alone in the 1v4. And again, it's a bit of an eco, so you can't take too much away from it. But what you can take away is, again, 5-0 to the Star Wars They made this go 14-0 in the last map. Is it going to be the same story here? Honestly, we could see another crazy first half where it's just applying so many rounds. And on the T side, too, you'd have to imagine they're going to be feeling good about this. Sparrow getting his first pick, looking to see if he can find more impact out from this elbow position. Gets caught off with shock with the AWP, so a fifth being found. And we had a chance of sort of sitting down with, uh, what is it, Marcos from Vizsla. We had Zedko to come in from the Sinner side. And I kind of got the vibe from both of them that... They respected one another between Vista and Sinners. They knew that if they were going to play each other again, it was going to be a tough game. It was going to be down to the wire. 
And when you look at the way the last game went down, that we had the exact same two maps in the veto of Overpass and Ancient coming in again, it's just been a completely different story this time. Yeah, to remind you all, Overpass went 25-23 last time around, 16-13 on Ancient as well. Both maps went the way of Sinners in that previous uh, engagement. So seeing that go so one-sided this time around, and it's not like it was all down to a comeback. It was pretty close from the outset. Marcos, pretty close shooting from him on the B site. We'll catch B-Stick first. Neofrag has been tagged up already. Neofrag will fall as the second player here on the bomb site itself. Jedka with his kill jumps out of the way. He's will gain access to the side, but a 5 on 3 advantage here for Vista on the retake. Jedko will end up falling. Now, Goofy looking to try and peek back in from this cave angle. Knows as it goes down to the side. Should be an easy pick. At least gets away with one. Shock still trying to find some more damage to back up Orpa. Oscar will get his kill in. Look towards Wood. Perfect timing of the two versus two. But he's such low HP. Shock has got to do some of the heavy lifting now. A backstab in from PHI will fire away. Sparrow's peeking with the AWP. Now leaves it all on Oscar. Center of the site. Mitts to the smoke. Here's Sparrow coming. Scope in. Shot out. Knows where PHR's at as well. A re-smoke back down from the man. He can see the bomb, but not for long. Incendiary forward. AWP on the defuse. He made noise. He forced PHR off. And he gets that kill. Was there time for this? I think there should be. Oh, oh no, it just comes in for Vistla. Oh, yeah. And they get their first round on the board. Ah, oh, jeez, that's well played for PHR. Iceland in those fights, tapping that bomb. You don't expect it to be tapped when there's that little time left. Great utility into the site. A lot of players being flashed. Oscar tries the best that he can to try and recover it, bring back this 2v4 situation. And PHR to clutch, that's so needed for Vizsla. I think as well, this little jump that he made crossing back into the site forced PHR off. If only he stalled for an extra few seconds, if only he had a little bit more HP, if only he got that kill, how many situations, how many scenarios that round would have worked the way of the Sinner's side. But maybe his mites and what ifs don't matter in this world. What happened is Vista get their first round on the board. Heavy damage sustained by the CTs though. The economy still looks great for the T's and the same can't be said for the CT side. Yeah, not seeing the double orbs coming out regularly from Vizsla. Again, due to the economical status of them, Sparrow knows that there's going to be a lot of util coming over the top. Needs to get help. What's offset? T-side players holding. Sparrow's going to get them on carrier. Oscar can flick back towards one trade. PHR also gets overwhelmed. The three on three. Martel's back. Zedko just going to go for the immediate plant in the midst of the smoke. And incendiaries will keep Jedko from peeking out of the cave at the uh, temple position, I should say. Does catch Neofrag over extending, so that's one pick. Engagement for Zedko sees the Orpa, tags him up. The M-Force looking to swing, Zedko's not ready for it, and Oscar is once again left in the clutch this time. A one versus three, looks up, sees a player, gets his kill, no more than that. A decent attempt. Try to see if he can stall in that 1v3, and there's only so many times that you can allow Oscar to clutch. Now, for Sinners, money's still pretty good. They got their bomb down, so it's an extra cash injection. At least double orbs can get saved in from Vizsla, so going into the third round, they'll have some more weaponry behind them. It was the slight over-aggression from Neofrag out to that temple position for me, Jay, which was kind of unnecessary. This pick right here, they were in a 3v3. They didn't exactly need a playmaker, and it just allows Jenka to do his own thing. In the second round of the row, Oscar's left in the clutch scenario. Sinners not getting off on quite the level of uh, confidence as we expected from them. It's not for these last couple of rounds. They're still up by 5-2 to two, and they've still got to buy back in. The mob plants are bolstering the economy state. They've done damage to Vista. It takes one good round to reset them. They're down on a couple of rounds of loss bonus. Only so much money we're flowing into the T as inside line. And Beast it with a great peek in. Once again stepping up to the table. Kicking things off in cave. Uh, just a missed opportunity, really, there for Marcos, being capitalized on quite quickly. And now Sinners know that they got the B pick. They could just converge in. Goofy, if he gets mollied out from Wood, he's going to have a difficult time getting out of there because B-Stick's in cave. He's going to take his peek out of his own accord. And B-Stick wins that fight as well. Great flick to the hand. Now Smoke's down. No need to Molotov. I know that most of the main site has been cleared up. Beastie going to peek ahead of that Smoke. will lose his life to the hands of Jade. Going to be a bit overly aggressive for him. The bomb can go down, though. Yeah, odd way to play a 5v3 when you're low HP, but hey, maybe he had something in the back of his mind that thought... I mean, to be fair though, he's probably thinking, economy's tight, the CTs are just backing off, they're going to save. So if I push through it from one of these lane smokes, I've actually got a chance of being able to catch one of them sleeping and do some further economical damage. So that's probably what he's trying to anticipate in that round. Well, regardless of his casualty, they're going to hold on to the weapons. This they're going to save in the 4v3 scenario. One kit on PHR, not a lot of utility to retake with. 
So yeah, six to the border. Sinners, they're right back on track. A couple of rounds hicked up there from the uh, Czech uh, squad. And yeah, six to the border. The Sinners can they'll be happy with how things have played out thus far. Oh, oh Zedko even catches Sparrow with that Ferrari peak. Perfect headshot. Two remain alive. And I don't think there's all potential in the buyback for Vistler. No, not now. And you just see both Orpers getting domed, not even having an opportunity to strike. Great pre-aim there from Zenko. Unfortunate for Sparrow. Again, was that even necessary, right? Was it just better that he just plays passive behind the big box and doesn't even expose himself to that angle? Sinners, yeah, they find their sixth. They do so much economical damage to Vizsla, though. Yeah, they'll be wondering about that, the options they took in the post-round. Uh, the Sneo frag that opens things up in the next round. PHR caught one player as part of a five-man stack. A bit spread out on the stack. Still players in Cheetah and Cave. That's one of the M4s dropping. Goofy's got to get that back on his part, and he's got no Kevlar to bolster it. Neo frag just takes some damage and 17 points of health. Nice nades in. Marcos seen next by Beast. Sparrow's going to turn his Deagle back in. And at this point, you start wondering when do the T-side players go for the wraparounds. They've already got a player in the uh, back of uh, Candles. He caught Goofy, and now he's wrapped in towards the A-side. So they will confirm that A is completely open. Yeah, this is what I really do like about Ancient, is that if you're able to pull a lot of a distraction, typically in the lane and ramp position, you can quite easily sneak someone into Candles just by pulling so much attention over. And it just allows so many counterplays to be able to have lurk attempts, to be able to bring the bomb into an open A bomb site. And for Vizsla, the best option here is just to try and hold on to the weapons again. Yeah, they've got two M4s and an AK, so overall it's a better weapon setup than they brought into the round. Makes lots of sense that they'll uh, hold on to those AKs if it's all possible. They even get another kill back on Shock. They won't be able to recover that rifle, but Marcos will still make it expensive for the Sinner's side. They've still got a fair amount of cash that will start to dwindle down here. A seventh up to the board, though. There's no dwindling on the rounds for the Sinner's. No, none at all. Beasting, hoping to just catch off more players. And... Any kills is good from this point onwards. Beastick needs to look back over towards the side, towards that default position. Doesn't quite happen, so even though Sinners lose a few players, doesn't make a huge difference in the overall picture. Sinners up to seven, and again, to stretch something that we were talking about in the in sort of the pregame before we even started the series was, okay, Ancient's been played a lot. We've seen it massively CT-sided. We know both of these teams can be solid on T-side, and for Sinners, they're proving it right here. Up in a case, we'll get Molotov off. Decent start for Vista in this round. The double up setup, of course, coming in with the AK that they had bolstered. And the main rifle staying in for the CT line. One of those orbs set up towards the main entrance. Very aggressive here from Sparrow, thanks to the smokes being put up early by the CT side. Shot in on Zedko will connect it. Great start. B stick to lean in with the AK as well. Exactly what they're looking for. Jedka just hoping to get a spam, do some decent damage down to that elbow position at the bottom of mid. The Sinners haven't really seen them in a 4v5 that often here on Ancient. No, they've been very, very uh, good with the startups, good with the opening kills. A lot of things have gone right for them over the course of this. AK is a B-stick. Next to lean in. M4 and Orb still on the crossfire. Pretty passive crossfire from the AWP in particular. And it's got smoked off of both sides. Goofy counter smokes back the cave entrance, but there's a gap in that smoke that they can make their way out wide of the site. Shock in to get killed off next up. Nays back from Oscar will eventually combine to get that casualty. So four on three. Vista have the advantage. Sinners have the site. Now, there's a quick wrap coming in for PHR, and Oscar's actually waiting for it. Beastix going aggressive. He can catch off the orb, and there's the kill down onto Spiro. Jenkins next up to face. At least brings it back to a 2v2, and actually follows up with the Neofrag. Oscar's going to try and clutch again, and he gets baited out with the AWP. He's oh. back in, and Jenka gets another triple. His multi-frags here on Ancient have been so important. And they've been big when they've come up for them. This are able to claw back a few rounds as a result. Third to their board, four rounds to separate them and the Sinners' lead. The great start for Spiro Sinners, but not ready for the positions that Vista were taking, both aggressive or otherwise. And no bomb plant uh, this time either. Oh, sorry, there was a bomb plant, excuse me, so actually the money should be okay. Didn't feel like it though, Vista just had an advantage from the word go. 
Now, Oscar has been alive in a lot of these late rounds, and it's kind of telling me that he probably needs more support in the post plans, doesn't he? You can't always expect him to win 1v3s, 1v2s on pretty much every round. Damage done heavy to Sinners very early on the utility basis. Neo Frag and Shock tagged up. Molotovs and Slokes in. Execution inbound from the T's. Shot for Marcos missing a little bit too quick as they crossed out. Bomb plant could be secured. It's safe. Neo Frag does get tagged up and Deadco peeks in to get the trade back. Oscar will fall. Jedco another double and PHR to follow suit with the man advantage. Maintain the AWP for Marcos. Connects and it's all on Zedco in cave. Smokes about to clear the entrance but Marcos has his crosshair locked already. Gets his 2k and brings Vistler in a fourth. Yeah, Jedka is putting on some decent numbers, and that time around he had more players in rotation that he could back with. Marcos being able to get away with a couple, and for Sinners, just they're getting the bomb down a lot here on T side, and sometimes it's just getting difficult to get the advantage. Goofy was unfortunate here not to be able to get more from Cave, and Jedka and PHR work together. Marcos is able to find Neofrag just escaping, and even though Marcos has only got you know, light kills, only four here on Ancient, he has been hitting a lot of the chances they give him. Orps in, M4s, double orps set up again for Vista Krakow. Dinners with the AKs across the entire board. No warp this time for sure uh, for uh, Oscar. Missed a number of shots in those previous couple of rounds, so it might not be the best idea. Get him on a standard rifle, a bit less expensive. Not quite having the flashy amount of impact that we saw from Overpass. Still one of the top guys on the board so far. Zedka the first to contact, and PHR will kill him off to begin. It starts feeling as if Vizsla are getting more involved in this game. Even though PHR takes some damage, he still is able to open up aggressive into that A main area. And Sparrow is watching the cross in case there's a walk to come through from Donut. They do lose Goofy from Neofrag that extended all the way down to the bottom of ramp. All important trade there to Sinners. Catch a frag that may turn back in this round. B-Stick looking to lean out of cave. Marcos, will he overextend? Will he give up his life to this man? The AWP has no idea that he's in this corner. At least not right now. Not right now. He might have an inkling or two. And just sat back and waiting for Oscar next. The AK. Looking to move in. Seen at a very tight angle. Jedka's going to win out that fight, but not quite the kill just yet. Finally, the teams are going to add towards the site itself. And Beasting just can't land his kill. Piet Marcos can get a frag back for it. Neofrag can get the trade. And meanwhile, Oscar's dropped, so it's only shocking Neofrag in this uh, scenario. Yeah, this is still difficult. Neofrag has to open up onto the window angle. If he's able to do so, we'll bring it back to a 2v2. AK leaning in. Going back to the bomb site, he's spotted by PHR. PHR wins it. Shock. Here's those footsteps inbound. Will he be checked in the corner? No, he won't. Oh, this is all everything. This is everything right here. He's going to see all three. Tap forward. Kill second. Not quite the third. If only he had the wherewithal. But no, PHR with a quadra in this round holds the clutch and holds the round. I'll give him a nice try and a good effort. You can see what he tried to do there. Just doesn't quite get himself in the right position to deal with all three of those players. Very difficult trigger discipline to work with when you've got that many CTs down onto the side. And for Neofrag, just not being able to back him up in a big way at ramp made that round so much more difficult. I guess, too, not seeing that third player out as quickly as it was did make that even more sort of less likely that it was going to come through. And for Vizsla, they're closing the gap. We are seeing a rush, though, for Sinners. Straight tech nines and Deagles out. Building spamming their way forward. They're going to get that first kill on Goofy immediately. M4 picked up. Rush around the corner for Neofrag. He's going to get a second and a third. And just like that, the CTs have fallen apart. No kills, no trades. Five on two. And they're backing off to save. And just when I've been giving so much praise to Vizsla on their comeback on their CT side, they get eco. They get destroyed in that round. There really isn't a massive amount of investment. And Neofrag just doing what he does best. That opening kill coming through with the pistol. And then the M4 just clearing up. Free all up, free rifles. Don't even need to get the AKs out with the amount of value they'll get in this. PHR even falls. They might lose Sparrow as well. He does get off one player on Sir Shock. But look at the hunt coming in. Zedko knows he can catch another good frag. M4 to wrap the corner. 
not Ooh. quite. That was close, though. It's 8-5 for the Sinners. Oh, Visla, that is not a round you can lose here. No, not at all. And they're on double eco status, so they're going to have to buy it up around the AWP. Just force it completely. You've got, what, Jedka down low. Do you want a half? Thing is, I look at this round, and I think you can decide to save and then buy up in round 15. You just yeah. probably want to give the AWP as much support as possible to try and keep pressure on. So I, I reckon buy it up here. It would leave you nothing to go into the 15th with, assuming you lose this. But I have to agree with you on this one, Blake. I don't know if the Lost Bonus is even that great for Vista at this moment. 8-5. Tactical was called in by the Polish squad. It's on their CT side as well, by the way. Yeah. Not quite the amount of effort that we look to see from them. Again, we saw how very CT-based this map can be on these stats a little bit earlier on. Sparrow, look at how far forward he's going to force up. He's going to get into the, 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 the crossfire of Neofrag. Shot on him immediately, pick up that kill. And Oscar just not ready for anyone else. The USPs of Jedcut leaning in, but not getting killed. Not getting anything else, though. Yeah, spotting that bomb, so it's some decent information. You might as well just gamble stack in this sort of round. Bring the AWP over. Oh, Oscar's going to pre-aim. Oh, Sparrow wins it! Another good kill for him, then falls out, and Sparrow's got a triple in for the Quadra. No, Zedko finally shuts him down, but that AWP has found all the picks necessary to allow the pistols to clean house. Zedko offered his hands on for the ace, leg shot on Marcos, and just kissed on the way out of the round. That was a disaster for Sinners. And it all got set up, really, by Sparrow to think that he re-peaks or... I mean, okay, he doesn't re-peak. He just peeks into the angle of where the AWP is boosted up from. Anytime you peek there when the AWP is already sort of honed and honing into that zone, when you don't have a flash, you're going to have a difficult time of winning out that fight. And he wins it onto Oscar and even finds himself a third on low HP. That was such a sick round for Sparrow. Yeah, he deserves all the plaudits for that round going right. An eco steer as well for Vista, one that he, we just gave them hell for losing, so got to give hell to Sinners as well. Put an AWP in that mix, did so much here, and now they're going to rush out towards mid control. Of course, Bomb Plant bonus with the extra save money gets the buy back in for them, but Zedko's lost his AK already, and Nade's in a PHR. The AUG should get forced back. Goofy's taking damage as well. He's known here towards window, he doesn't escape with his life. Yeah, it was a decent attempt to try and see if you can catch them sleeping, have a rap play, and it just does not happen. They're there waiting for it. They're able to, to catch a slight glimpse of that information. And dealing with the AWPA down here in the candles position could be difficult. They'll have to get a, at least a flash or a smoke down. B-Stick leaning in. On our account for Sparrow here in the CT spawn. Oh, look at PHR. Yeah, he has pushed up the AUG all the way out towards Elbow here. Are they ready for him? Yes, they are. Shox was watching it. I'll be a 4v3 now for Sinis. Now, that looked like it was such a great play. Shame that it didn't move out. And now for Vizsla, where do you go with that? You're able to clear out all of the map control towards the A side. You still don't really know about the mass mid players. Smokes down or in. Great shot. Jed Cruel also finds B stick, so the advantage swings back the favor of Vista. Sparrow is going to get overwhelmed. Jed Cruel's also on low HP, so a 2v2. Favoring Sinners on the uh, HP numbers alone. We get that bomb down to the site and we'll go for the safer plant. Jed could swing out. Shot could catch him. He's going to wait for his teammate to come in from Donut or not. Swing of his own apparition. And Shot's going to catch the second as well. A full on ace for him. Their second one of the series for the Sinners as Vista. Do not find much in the CT side as they go to their T half. Things look dire after the break. Thank you.
Yeah, kicking things off straight away. Aggressive for the T's down to this mid position. And for Sinners, they've been able to win out that opening man advantage. Spot that bomb. They know exactly what's going on. Yeah, they're on the CT side, the favoured half of this map, and they've gotten two kills without any trades here for this side, making it four frags overall. Oscar and Shot combined for more, and PHR, he's just got nothing out in this one. Smoked away from Candles, out of the CT entrance, tagged up by those firing bullets. I think Neofrag's trying to creep in close for a knife kill. Zedko's not going to let him get it. Just shot in the headshot and win the pistol for Sinner's attempt for the board, and that is... Is probably one of the worst case scenarios for Vista in this one. They didn't get much on their CT side, so they needed a pistol to get some sort of momentum going into the second half. Yeah, just a fun fact about that first half. Every round that Vista won was a retake, and a couple of those were even clutches. So that we just constantly saw a lot of those rounds being competitive. What wasn't so fun was obviously that pistol. There for Vista, getting red straight away, losing the opening man advantage, rotations coming in quickly. And for Vista, they think to themselves, okay, we got some damage in. Where are we going from here? Buy it up, try and see if we could force the issue. Because there wasn't a bomb plan, it's only going to be Deagles. It's risky to buy like this. Yeah, hand cannons out. Seeing what they can get out of this. Probably because they don't really have much of a choice. Although it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. Yeah, it is. No bomb plant. No real basis. Go to 12 to 6 if you lose this uh, force buy. Probably... 11-6 to the first gun setup. If you went for the eco, and assuming you got the bomb plants as well, it still would be a bit of a broken buy. This lot. Working in slowly. They've given up info towards the uh, lane default. B-Stick just sitting here with the SMGs, waiting for them to pop out. And lucky util, really, for sitters. And, well, you have to imagine a lot of these fights are going to have to come in dry. B-Stick's just getting baited by his teammate. Goofy might not expect him to be here. Oh, he takes that shot anyway and can pre fires the angle, gets his kills in. The frag can double back up to the man advantage for Sinners. Needs backup to come here, though. Fake flash to the left, peek into the right, and it will be Marcos with the P250 to get his kill back in. A 2v2. Bond plant secured at least, and still a winnable clutch here for Vistler. That's very promising for the T's. Now, they are stuck out to this cave position, and Zedko's got a smoke, so if he puts it down to cave, they're kind of done. Thinking in the dry face though, Shock sees the first, gets the kill, SMG of Jedka on the wraparounds here, the bomb in a relatively open position, Shock sees him, burst fire, and the defuser just gets stuck here with a smoke, also for extra support, he'll look in, in, in towards that, uh, uh, that ramp position, look for his pit, does his damage, keeps Jedka at bay, and that's enough time to get the defuser into this one, they'll hunt him down after the fact as well, knife oh. in fact, no, <laughs> not quite, close for no cigar for Shock, it's still going to be 11 for Sinners. That was a cheeky attempt. My goodness, Goofy really showed up here with the Deagle. Couple of banging shots. And I thought with that, there was going to be something in it. They get the bomb down. It's a 2v2 situation. They're able to deal with Neofrag. And even Zedko didn't put that smoke down until it was quite late. They peeked into Cave Dry. They're going to run boost Oscar. Get him very aggressive into mid. Master seen the first. Goofy will force him back with the AK presence. Nades in over at Elbow. Doing damage to Sparrow in minimal amounts. 94 HP. Marcos just waits behind the smoke as Neofrag engages towards Ram. Sees one. Goofy caught for 13. Still no kills yet. Now Marcos is trying to hope for a timing, just a, a reposition of one of the CTs down on this A site. Neofrag making a good info play forward, dealing with that first player transfer. Lovely. Oh, it makes it look easy. So much more than info play in the end of it. Info was what he was looking for. We're catching two picks and a. Damage done to Marcos. Next shot with a kill in. Doubles up towards mid. This is like a child picking away at a fly now. Sin is just methodically dismantling the Vista side. Marcos will grab the bomb, try push it in, but look at the CT swarm. They know he's here at spawn. And if they want to wait for a little bit longer, they can get him off the time and all. Yeah, honestly, you're right about that. And now even pushing this elbow position probably means that they're not going to be able to kill him after time. B-Stick swings out and no one falls at all. So many of those T-side weapons. You've got what? The double M4s out for Oscar and Zenko. AK for B-Stick, Shock, and even for Neofrag. And just this play, Jenka's got to get this trade. No matter how fight that, that sort of engagement may be, when you lose your teammate endorsed, you have to be getting the one for one. And he just isn't able to. And look at the T-side weapons, the CT's game from that round as well. So much on a win there for their 12 to 6. And look at Oscar pushing in. Pistols out. Goofy caught. Dead buried. Seems like second man as well with the P250. Forces him back. P250 
The HR wants nothing to do with that aggression. The CTs will just wait in their standard positions, not knowing where Vista are going to go. But knowing they haven't got many options and they haven't got much firepower. Nah, not at all. Marcos. Honestly, if he just gets over aggress, that could be the bomb being dropped. They're going to hope to try and spam him away. It's going to be difficult to kind of get that bullet to connect onto him when he's hugging the wall. Vizza can't imagine to expect much. Oh, this HG is going to do some damage. Resmoke on those doors to keep him suppressed. Meanwhile, a bit of action in from the ace site. Sparrow. Hoping he can uh, stun Zedko with an eagle shot. Gets smoked off anyway, so he won't even have a chance to lean out. He doesn't want to extend past that smoke. That bomb still has his heart set on the B side, though, and with the lack of time left for Vistla to slow walk back out, they're going to have to get out the information, or they've just got to go full send. Yeah, B Stig's just trying to see if he can gather a slight pick, and yeah, seen that bomb now. They kind of know what's going on. That's a decent pick for PHR. Oscar knows what the plan is. He's seen the bomb. He's just trying to get this kill, and if he can do so, then he'll deny anything here for Vista Krakow. Four versus four. Jedka walking out. Oh, okay. This is smart. This is really smart from this. They still got PHR here with the AK still being hunted down. The bomb's already rotated out of position. They know that A site's completely open. They'll get that pick at last and start to realize what's going on. But Vista are at least going to get a bomb plant. And considering the buy that they have in this round, that'll be more than enough. They do find Sparrow, so there's another casualty against the C side line. They will sleep the bomb plant in. So all the case of bonuses here for the retake. Jedka falls. So will Marcos. Yeah, and... Honestly, the grand scheme of things, it's a very good round. Yeah, it's only an eco. You get one kill, it's the bomb plant. That's what you're looking for. For Vizla, they're running out of room. And this is where we've got to start being realistic. Yeah, we can be happy with the bait setup and what they're able to do with the distraction. And oh, it was kind of a cheeky play. Yeah, it might have been. They're still 6 to 13 down. They've got to start stepping it up. A very filthy shot there from PHR. So credit to him. He makes it look impressive. And whilst in isolation, that round is a great round with a bomb plant bonus for a T-side deco. In the grand scale of the map up, it's still 13-6 now for Sinners. So this, they need to turn that bomb plant bonus into a round. They need to do it now. They need to not let go of that momentum. They went 16-13 down to try and turn things around in this map up. They could have to get all 10 of the next rounds. They will find that first pick on Zedco to start things off here. That's a start going into the next, and exactly what Sinners were not hoping for at all. They will be able to re-smoke off this ramp position, try and contain Vizsla from not just overextending and going for that B-pop. Even some further wallbang spam going down into Neofrag. He's on 45 now. Sprays on the AK. M4 for Oscar. Sees BHR pushed up. Hoping for a bit more, but ultimately catches that trade to a 4 versus 4. Now the CTs have their advantage removed away from the Vistler side. It's even standing. Footsteps heard in cave. Beast it going to hide back over at Wood. Expect Molotovs to come in his way or just hold down with a passive cross by position. Smoke on to the left lane. Neo Frag joined by teammates. There's a hard stack back in with the CT forces. Nades at the ready will try to catch off these individuals. Flashes away. M4 turned away from They aren't going to be able to deal with Beastie just yet. Sparrow can get a kill in against him. Naded down at three points of health. Molotovs and Burst Fire catching Goofy to nine as well. Bomb plant will be secured pretty open and Jedka falls for the smoke. Uh, such low HP for so many players. This does favor up to the Sinner side. Vizsla need Goofy to be able to get some support from Marcos. Goofy's on site, swing on Neo, frag, and the AWP and the AK can strike at the right time. Simultaneous kills, leaving it all on shock. Leaning up, knows that Marcos out there somewhere. Goofy's going to take face. Now get the info, Marcos to lean in and get his AWP pick to allow Vista the seventh. Sinners, they did have the advantage, but the right kills came in at the right time. They did not allow those picks to go against them. And they come out with their first on the T side. A B stick was just out of position on timing right. He kind of extends from wood to that right hand side just slightly too early. If he's able to hold that position, maybe he's able to get one kill before falling down. And that was 81's round, honestly. There were so many low HP players. And Marcos and Goofy, they worked together on that one. Oscar aggressing him to A main with a teammate, not seeing anything. M4s again leaning in to try and against the T-side line. They've seen Goofy at least and Neofrag can get the trade. Zedko follows suit. And there's aggression out towards the A-bomb site half. Neofrag with a second face in. Get Sparrow as well. Marcos is AWP. Now known here towards Ramp. Knows that there's a lot of aggression that's coming from the CT line. 
And he's going to try counter aggressively and back in towards Candles. Maybe catch up a player. Bring it back to a 2v1. Not quite. Missing that shot. Now they know where he is. That was a good attempt. He knows if he gets that bomb down straight away, the chance of him winning a 1v3 is going to be tough. So, okay, can I actually isolate a pick? Can I look back in? It could be an orb v orb duel that goes the way of Oscar. My mind is struggling to realize what happened in that round, Jay. So, we've got Beastic aggressing ramp with a teammate. Zenko aggressing A main with a teammate of Oscar. Then Neofrag aggresses into lane. Like, what is going on there? So many of those CT players just were hyper aggressive. And Vista, they got caught off guard for it. It's still as a playing with just sheer confidence. That's why they're able to get away with players like that and do it time and time again. 14 to 7, 2 away from closing out this tournament. Sin is in full control, and look at Shock just sending up towards the mid control, seeing nothing, hearing nothing in both elbow and window. Meanwhile, utility being thrown over, it's going to have to be the execution, and Beast against the SMG with Neo Fry actually lining up three and stealing those kills away from his teammate, but dropping the bomb and dropping a four on two. It may have been the Oscar show with Matt One, but Neo Frag, he's trying to make it his show here on Ancient. We've seen some great stuff from him. Lots of multi frags, a lot of impact, and for Vizsla, a lot of two players, <laughs> Marcos and Spiro, have to try and see if they can win this round. Flash over the top. Flash. They just keep peeking. They just don't stop. Oscar set that up so well, and he even gets the orc pick in to allow himself his own kill in this round. Would have done enough to set up Neo Frag or set up Zedko in that context. But what a great hold as well. Neo Frag did so much with that. Wonderfully done. Wonderfully done. And Sinners are just firing on all cylinders. Oscar, Shock, Neo Frag, all at 20 kills or above. Map match and tournament point here in the V4 Future Sports Festival International Online Cup. This they know that they've got to get to OT and then some. And given how CT sided this has been for Sinners. This is going to be a task. Goofy, first up to task. Looking around against Beastick, Neo Frag gets that first kill. Goofy and PHR can combine for those two casualties, so it is a 4v3 for Vistler. Zenko's expecting some aggression in the back line, so just putting that incendiary down, allowing him to look into the side. PHR's move forward. Aids on, damage done towards it. Flashbang turned away, and Zenko gets away with the kill. Marcos responds towards it, though. So again, advantage still favors Vistler. Utility going down with smokes out to the right lane. Expecting Marcos to peek ahead of it, and he will, but the AK looks away at the wrong moment. AWP gets caught for it, so shock in a one on three, and Vistler may still maintain their lives here in the grand finals as Goofy closes with a kill of his own. It's eight to the board of Vistler, a survival round to say the least. They got eight rounds in the first map of Overpass. Will it be eight here again today, or will it be even more? PHR just getting a one for one, moving forward, trying to get as much damage in as possible, or at least setting Marcos up to be into that trade position. And then just that aggressive move that catches Oscar off guard. The CTs aren't expecting them to be faced with aggression. Yeah, Sinner's going much faster this time. This lot. Again, look at the just mass amount of ramp control we're going to see from the CTs. Neo Frag, back's turn. We're going to try and hunt for Goofy. AK does punish it this time. So Vistler have started to find the counter plays. Try and find the anti strats here. Oscar's AWP. Oh, it's leaning in as well here. Marcos that will win out a fight against Zedko. 5 versus 3. AK in Vespera will catch off the slightest angle of Oscar. So Vistler getting a far more confident round in this one. They will have the A site and they probably have the round itself. Yeah, PHR could do some more damage, honestly. Just to some of these saving players. Beast, it could fall, depending on the angle that gets held. Shock is kind of stuck, because they know where he is in Candles. So him getting out of here alive is going to be difficult. Smoke CT, Molotov Candles, escape to the B site. Take a blind shot against the Orpa. Try see if he can connect it onto Marcos. And if he can remove that weapon from play, that would be valuable to the CT forces. Oh, oh, I'm scoping at the worst <laughs> moment. I honestly thought he took the shot there. Beastick will get PHR, bait and switch. Shock drawing his attention towards the B site, and they weren't ready for the TT entrance or the T entrance. So, yeah, nine to the board of this one. Starting to catch up again, but much like last round, it's still a. Well, much like last, last map, I should say, it's still a hell of a long way to go before they get 2 OT. Sticks on the trot, and one good round for Sinners could do it. Yeah, you'd have to imagine so. 
this round right here was just default heavy, just everyone being able to find some good picks, being able to develop a lot of map control, not finding much at all in terms of success for Sinners. Yeah, they were able to at least get that last kill, so Beastick actually doesn't get himself over to that AK, so it's just an AWP and an M4 to work with. And when gambling stack on A, this could still be a round where they do damage. Well, they were Sparrow that dished out so much potential with the AWP. Now Oscar's turn to do the similar sort of thing against Vistler. You can hear the shock spamming his way ahead of the smoke here at Candles. Seeing Goofy not catching the kill for him. And the CTs will force forward to grab that second orb. Neofrag now up to task. Sees another kill. Gets the five versus three. PHR's nade can support on Zedko's part. Jedka with a responsive, but Oscar's still up there with his orb. He's dropped the bomb. It's a three on two. And the two T side players in the candles lined up by Beastie. He has all the info, but the CTs are siphoned off from each other. Oscar gets back out of the site. Caught off by the flashbang. Sparrow sees him. Shot's going to wrap in so hard in. And the back line's over at Donut. Oscar. Inning in with the utility out. The T's are going to try to go for this here. They have no choice. Oh, Sparrow's just trying to see if he can isolate the 1v1s, and he denies it. It comes through from Shock with the Deagle, and Goofy's got to try and stand up. The NWP oh my gets the job done. Can we all hail King Oscar? My goodness, what a best of three this was from him. And on an eco round to get it done.